Hey guys, welcome back to Genius Learning. Okay, in this video, I wanna show cylindrical coordinates. So the position of a particle, let's say, um, anywhere along the surface of this cylinder or along the inside, and also um, a differential volume element, um, just like in the previous videos for the sphere. Okay, so what we're gonna start off with is um, understanding the spherical coordinates so from the center to the outside is going to be a radius of R okay so that's the same thing as this down here radius of R and just like before we had um, Phi that runs in the XY plane and so from X towards the Y is our Phi and here, this distance along the surface is going to be our z. Okay, so anywhere along the surface is going to be our z. And, and that's it. And so if I just draw this visual here, okay, then it'll be clear to see how we choose our coordinate system uh, for a, a cylinder. So we have a length out of R, and we know that this inside is phi, okay? And so now, all we gotta do is do the components. So opposite over hypotenuse, here we have R sine phi and adjacent over hypotenuse, which is R cosine phi, which is the same thing as this line over here. So this is R cosine phi, and this line here is the same thing as this one over here. Okay, and so so now it's clear to see that for the X position, um, which is this one right here, right? This is our X position in the X direction. We're gonna have R cosine of phi. For the Y position, right? We're gonna have R sine of phi, which is the same one as this one here. And for the Z, we're just gonna have Z. So, this is the position in cylindrical coordinates. All right, so now let's take a look at a volume element in cylindrical coordinates. Okay, so here I'm gonna draw this cylinder. See if I can trace this outline, okay. Same as before, we're just gonna try to identify a volume element and we're gonna be able to use that for integration that requires three integrals, which is a volume integral. So a 3D image, basically. Okay, so this, this is our cylinder, all right, and now let's draw our differential volume. So we have here a distance out of R, radius, just like before, okay? And here we have phi, which exists in the XY plane. And if I move another distance of phi, d phi, right? That'll be this line here, okay? So phi, differential phi, which is this up to this line here. And from that, we can see that we have an arc length. Okay, this arc length here is R d phi. Okay, so it's the radius times the angle, which is gonna give us that. All right, so now let's project this arc length up here.
okay so it's the same thing as this arc here right and it's the same thing as this up here we're gonna project higher than our cylinder so now we can clearly see a volume element arise from this okay so the cylinder stops here at this black line and we're extending it farther to show that we want a differential length in the Z, okay? We want a differential length outward, which is gonna be our DR, okay? We want a differential length outward. Okay, so it's extending this R. So basically we're doing R and then we're extending it dr so that's what this this length here is so um, if we want to we want to imagine the r is up here just like it is up here and we're extending it outward dr okay and so let's label that so this is dr right this extension here which is the same thing as this one which is the same thing as all of these, all right? They're all coming outward. And this arc length is the same as this, is the same as this. It is also the same as these out here after the extension of dr, okay? So all of these are also r d phi, okay? All right, so now, all we have left is the height at which we extended it. And so the cylinder stops here at this black line and we extended it further, a length, right? Or a height of DZ, okay? Because this was our original Z here. Okay, so let's, let's do that in a, in a different color here. So from here to here, right, the length of the cylinder was Z. And then what we did was we extended it further going up to DZ. So maybe another visual could be here where you have Z, right, the length of the cylinder and extending it further made it DZ, which is what we have here now, right? So the same way that R extended further which is this line here, made a dr, okay? And then we keep the same arc length there. And so this is a uh, differential area, it's like the little floor bed there, and then kind of like the roof top of this. So for a better image, we just shade those in there, all right? And so with those things there, now we can do our volume element. So. Um, let's see, so our volume element, okay, is going to be all three of these. And so, for example, if we had a cube, just like before, so to get the volume of a cube, we need the length times the width uh, times the height, right, which we'll label C. Okay, so... In the same way, we're gonna do length times width times height. All right, so let's see what that looks like. All right, let's first identify the length. Um, so we'll say that the length could be dr, okay? And then we can say that the width could be this piece right here. So that's R D phi. And then finally we can label this as the height since we're moving up in the Z direction. Okay, and we just have DZ. All right, so then it's clear to see that our volume element for a cylinder is gonna be R DR. Right, we could just move that 
heat to this side since they're all multiplying. It's going to be R D R uh, D Z D phi. Okay, and we can we can rearrange these however you want. I just like to write them like that, especially with the R D R next to each other. All right, so that's how you find the differential volume element for a cylinder and the position coordinates for a cylinder.